Hello, Stephen here. It's been a while since I've put a YouTube video together for my channel, but I wanted to compare two really popular telescopes, um, quite often purchased by beginners, uh, to draw some interesting parallels between them to point out some positives and negatives. So on the left, I have my Nexstar 8 SE, which I have a fairly comprehensive review of. It's a tracking automated telescope. It's quite a bit more expensive than the telescope on the right, which is a Skywatcher 200mm Dobsonian, often recommended as a good beginner's scope. And I would agree, but I just wanted to point out a few things between the two telescopes. So let, let's get that first point out of the way. The one on the left is a lot more expensive, over a thousand pound for this unit, although there are smaller examples of it. There's an 8 and a 4 inch version. The telescope on the right, however, very affordable. Um, it's only going to cost you a few hundred pound. It has the same aperture. So we have a 200 millimeter primary aperture here and the same on this reflector. Now, a couple of points about the optics. This is a Schmidt Cassegrain, which means it's kind of like a collapsed reflector. It has a couple of mirrors which uh, allows it to be shrunk down and makes it more portable. The one issue you do get with that is you get a slightly lower uh, resolution and you've got more of the primary aperture obscured. Um, that can make a very small amount of difference if you're looking at a planet, maybe in terms of the contrast you'll see. Whereas on this much simpler reflector, uh, you've got a smaller area that's obscured um, from, from the main light gathering aperture and that can give you sometimes a wee bit more crisp images and better contrast but I have to say I find it very difficult to tell them apart. So those are the primary optics. Let's now talk about use in the field as, as it were. Now a lot of beginners start with a telescope like this because it's so simple to use. It's a daub, you take it out, you can very quickly um, point it in your desired direction. You've got a spotter scope here, so you can find the object you want and then look through the main eyepiece. You can focus it here. And that's all very good, nice and simple, nice and quick, unless you do not know your way around the night sky. And that's a very, very common um, problem for beginners is they just do not know what to look at. So in some ways um, the automated tracking scope can be an advantage there because with this you start by setting it, setting up, pointing at maybe a couple of bright stars. Once you've aligned it though you can go to a huge number of objects and you do not need to know your way around the night sky and that can therefore be a huge advantage for beginners. And strangely enough, um, and I've observed this many times before, sometimes having started on an automated scope like this, um, a beginner, once they get a wee bit more confident, will actually move back to a simpler daub because they know their way around the sky and they just find it less hassle to use. So interesting to think about it like that and well worth considering your experience in finding things in the night sky before you choose either scope. So one other thing on the optics I wanted to mention. If you live in a cold, wet environment like I do in Scotland, if you live probably anywhere in Northern Europe, the time you're going to do most of your observing is going to be winter. And what you're going to find with a schmidt cassegrain telescope like this is you're going to dew over very quickly. So um, as the telescope um, cools and you've got very cold environment above you, uh, water vapour is going to condense onto the surface of the lens. Um, and that's going to happen very, very quickly with um, a schmidt cassegrain telescope like this. And due to that, you'll need to invest in a dew cover, which will only partially help. And in fact, I've had to end up um, purchasing a dew heater for this unit because it can get really bad. So if you want to go out for extended periods, maybe you're looking at a galaxy, you want to leave the telescope for maybe 
30 minutes. Um, this is going to dew up unless you get a dew heater. However, this telescope, with its long protective tube and the optics way down at the bottom, um, is not particularly prone to dewing up. It takes a long time to dew up, and that's a real advantage of a unit like this if you're using it in a cold environment. Now, if it's really cold, it will dew up, but it's the time you've got to consider. This is going to dew up much quicker than this unit, and I can't um, understate how much of a big deal that can be. It can be really frustrating when your telescope fogs over and your lovely crisp views are spoiled. So there we go, there's another couple of things to consider. What about the F ratio? Now this is getting a wee bit more technical, but this is important also when considering these two scopes. This is an F10 scope, whereas this is an F5. Now what that means is the Celestron here is actually set up for planetary viewings and its field of view is much, much smaller than this telescope. So the lower the F number means you get a wider field of view. That can also be a big deal. So this telescope is much better at looking at perhaps uh, smaller star clusters than this telescope because the fields are so narrow that I generally would not even think about looking at a star cluster in a telescope like this unless I purchase a focal reducer. And there is actually a really good focal reducer for this telescope. It's about 150 quid. You need to factor that in and you can screw it on the back. And when you do that, the F number drops to, I believe it's about 6.7 or something like that. So it becomes much closer to the, to the reflector there. So that's worth considering. I'm trying to think of a good example of something you might look at. Um, there's two galaxies in Urza Major, uh, the Bode's Nebulae, M80, M81. This telescope with a 32mm eyepiece can capture both galaxies really easily in the field, whereas this telescope will not, unless you have a focal reducer. So that's another thing to think about, and in general I would argue that this is a better F ratio for a beginner. And in general, the higher the F number, the more power, the more magnification you can get out of the unit. So the effective magnification on this is higher than this, but in practical terms, you never need that high a magnification unless you're, I don't know, looking at planetary nebulae, perhaps under the absolute best conditions. This um, sort of F number or F ratio, F5 is gonna be absolutely fine. So there we go, a couple of other things to consider. The last point I want to talk about is portability. And without any shadow of a doubt, this unit here is way more portable. When I decouple that from the tripod, I can actually get it in a small suitcase. I can pack away the tripod, I can put it in a small boot of a car. This unit is a lot bulkier. You could get it in the main optic tube across the back seats of a car, then you'd have to lug this um, stand uh, with you, so that's something to consider. You might want to think about getting the 150mm version of this if portability is an issue. But in general, these big daubs are uh, less portable than something like the schmidt green here, and that's kind of what you're paying for. You're paying for the um, compressed optics. And that gives you the higher price point. So there we go. I hope that is something to think about. I've been using telescopes like this for a long time. I've used them in outreach and personally. So I, I think I have a fair amount of experience um, using these telescopes to make a decent comparison. So I hope my views have been helpful and good luck. If you are buying a new telescope, give it some thought. Don't rush into it and clear skies.